Hi folks, welcome to or welcome back to Exposed and if I'm welcoming you back and you like it here I'd love it if you stayed and subbed. I've been debating about whether or not to do this last Lisa video because I've seen a few clips of what people were saying on the bakery and it doesn't sound good. So if you've tuned in and you've ever had a problem with food any type of ED, because we're not allowed to actually say any words about anything on YouTube anymore. I'm sure you know what I mean. I would suggest you click out now. Because this is either going to trigger you or annoy the fuck out of you, one of the two. For the rest of us, it's business as usual with Lisa being a total fucking ass. Okay, here we go. Oh, I didn't say what she'd called it, did I? Um, avoid holiday weight is what she's plastered across the thumbnail. Avoid holiday weight gain with these five easy tips. Carnivore edition. Were well, there others? And again, the door's wide open. I'm sure she's doing it just to piss me off. If you are, Lisa, I'm giving you the middle finger. Okay, here we go. Are you worried about gaining weight over the holidays? No. I think all of us have a little bit of anxiety when we think about all of the holiday get-togethers. Even if you aren't going to parties, you are probably going to have a meal with other people. You might be having, like me, having people over to your home. And this video is not just for carnivore. I am on the carnivore diet. I You're having people over, are you? Okay. You're going to have a proper tablecloth this year, not too stuck together. And here's a tip. You've got plenty of time between now and then. Iron the fucking thing. Hang on. You don't even need to iron it, can you? You can use your super duper steamer to steam the fucking creases out of it. And it might look nice. And why are the pictures not of you and your family enjoying things, if that's what you do? It's other people, stock photos of other people having parties. Have been for over two and a half years. So all of these principles that I tell you are the same principles that I use, but they are the same principles I would use for... Is that her new word, principles? Who taught her that one? For any diet. Before we get started, I want to tell you about the City Beauty Sale. If you have been here on my channel, you know. On my YouTube. Diet I've got, or just. I've got this thing. I don't know what it's called. I'll try and find it. It's amazing. Got ad block. Obvs. But this thing I've got. It jumps over. It skips over all the fucking. Get Hello Fresh, And you get 75 meals for free if you use my name. It cuts all that out. But if you come across a video like this where they haven't, you can do it yourself. You like set the timer so that anyone who watches it after you doesn't have to watch all the bullshit sponsorship fucking sell, sell, sell nonsense. Just someone who doesn't want to overindulge during the holidays. Right. Okay. If you're someone that doesn't want to overindulge at the holidays, don't. Simple. Every Christmas... I go downstairs, we set the table in the kitchen, and we all sit round and have Christmas dinner. For Christmas dinner, I have roast potatoes and stuffing and everything else that goes with a Christmas dinner. Because it's fucking Christmas, and it's the one day of the year, apart from my birthday and the kids' birthdays, that I'll allow myself a treat. There are other days, I'm not just saying they're the only days in the year that I treat myself, but when it's the kids' birthdays, there's cake. So I'm having cake. Um, do you know what I mean? They pick what they want for tea on their birthdays. So it's normally, it's either a spag bowl, which is a staple, or um, KFC, or whatever, a pizza, whatever. Whatever they choose, I eat it too. 
because I'm very capable of having that one indulgence and then carrying on the next day as normal and my whole body doesn't go quick, be fatter, pop out everywhere because you are allowed to fucking eat. If you can't go to a dinner party and not eat everything including the table then you're fine. If you think you're going to fucking grab everything and shove it in like tomorrow's... An... What was I going to say? Shoving it all in like it's the end of the world, then you've got a problem. How difficult is it for you at Thanksgiving to sit at a table with your family and just have the turkey? You don't have to have all the sides. We know if it was Lardy, she'd have all the sides and not the turkey, but it's easy to do, Lisa. Eat before you go. Eat before you go. And I don't mean just a snack. Eat until you are full, until you can't even think about eating anything else before you go to any family get-togethers, to any dinners out with friends. That looks like her family get-togethers, doesn't it? Nobody there. That's Lisa's life. Table set for no one. Friends going over to a party. Even if you think that there are going to be things there that you are going to be able to eat, say in my case, I might think, oh, well, there will be meatballs or something like that that I could eat. Don't depend on that. Because nine times out of 10, I probably shouldn't be eating those meatballs because they might be in a sauce with grape jelly or something like that in there. But you don't want to depend on that. Be I shouldn't be eating them. Why? Is it going to kill you to have them one day of the year? And how about if you've been invited somewhere saying, what's on the menu? So they can tell you. So you know what they're going to have. So you know if you can eat or not. But still, like I said, for fuck's sake, one day, you can't go to somebody's house one day and eat normally. What will happen, Lisa, if you eat a carb? Will you, will you blow up? Will you turn into a fucking space hopper? What will happen? Are you scared it'll open the floodgates and that's it? Carnivore will go out the window and then you'll be scomping. Scomping? What's scomping when it's at home? <laughs> Chomping down everything in sight. I just, I can't with this woman. Eat before you go. So you're being invited to somebody's house for a meal and you're what? What are you going to do? Sit at the table while everyone else eats with an empty plate? Because if you get there and you're hungry, you will make bad decisions. You will just, it's just something about it. You will look at everything and you will justify it. Someone will say, go ahead. It's Christmas. Live a little. You don't need to lose weight. All of those things. So make sure that you are full before you go. And I thought it wasn't about losing weight. Didn't you say that the uh, carnivore diet was for your poorly tummy? Sorry, I'm trying to grab my coffee. That's what you said. Oh, it's not to do with losing weight. And now you're saying it is. Like we knew it was all along. But, you know, we were just going along with your stupid story. Then you are less likely to make bad decisions and don't depend on there to be, even if you go to a restaurant, a lot of times I'll think, well, I'll just get a steak when I'm there. Don't depend on that. Unless you have looked at the menu and you know for a fact, and then I still do not go to a restaurant hungry because it's going to be a few minutes where I'm going to be sitting there with nothing to eat because I'm not eating appetizers. <laughs> I'm not eating a salad. So I don't want to sit there hungry and I don't want to make any bad decisions. So eat before. I don't want to sit there hungry. Wah, wah, wah. Really, how hungry are you that you can't sit for five minutes while everyone else has their appetizer? 
It's all about Lisa, like we didn't know. How difficult is it to just sit there for a few minutes while everybody else has their fu- Wow. Before you go, until you are full, satiated, and cannot even think about any more food. Step away from the kitchen. Tip two is don't hang around the food. Don't hang around the kitchen. I know that is so hard to do because that is where people gather. They gather around the cook in the kitchen and you know how it is, everything's sitting out or they're cooking it or they might have hors d'oeuvres or whatever. They might have some cookies that they've done for dessert. And God forbid you wouldn't be able to walk past them and not eat the entire plate. Here's an idea. Never mind five tips. Here's one. Don't fucking go. There you go. Problem solved. You stay home on your lonesome and let the rest of the family go out and eat and enjoy themselves. And yet again, another picture, not yours. Where are all your family gatherings? I'm thinking about my family. We always have just food everywhere, everywhere. The person who is hosting usually has things and then people are bringing things and, you know, just little appetizers and stuff out. So step away from the food because the more you sit there and look at it, the more your mind is going to play tricks with you and it will tell you, oh, you can eat the pigs in the blanket. Just that little bit of biscuit or croissant won't hurt you. Or you might just eat more. You can eat the pigs in the blanket. So what's the problem there? That's meat. I'm lost. Really? Why can't you just have a plate of that and some turkey? What is your problem? My daughter, that's her favourite bit of Christmas. Plate her up a whole Christmas dinner. What does she eat? The pigs in blankets and, and the stuffing. <laughs> and it's like, eat the rest. Oof. Do I have to? Yes, you do. I just, I, meh. Like even if you're not on a diet, you will eat more than you think you are. And if you eat those few things in the kitchen and then you sit down for your meal, you're going to be double, double eating bad. No, you're not going to be double eating bad. Because you don't have to clear the plate, do you? You eat until your stomach tells your head to stop eating. That switch in lardy is completely broken and it sounds to me like you've fucking broken yours as well. How old are you that you can't just fucking wait till you sit down and eat something with everybody else like a normal person? Or go hog wild for that day. Then what? It doesn't make... Ugh. So stay away from the kitchen. This is what I've done the past two years is instead of staying in the kitchen, even where the women are, where I'm more likely to want to be and talk, I will make myself go out, uh, go outside maybe, go spend some time with the children, go talk to people and just get my mind off of it and, you know, just not worry about it. It's so that's the problem. You need to get your mind off of food because you're constantly hungry because the diet that you're doing is wrong. You have limited yourself so much that you're hungry all the time. And if you look at food, you know you want to eat it. I don't know why you said you need to stay away from the kitchen. You don't fucking go in the kitchen anyway. John's going to be the one doing the cooking, isn't he? Not you. As soon as you start talking with someone else or start doing something else, watching TV or whatever, then you will not think about it. You won't realize that you're not in there eating everything that everyone else is. Eat before you start cooking. If you are hosting a get together or a dinner, eat before you even start cooking. Before you start cooking like the corn souffle and the macaroni and cheese and even more things like pigs in the blanket or meatballs or all the 
the things that she really wants to eat, but she's forcing herself not to. There's nothing wrong with fucking pigs in blankets. It's meat. That's what you eat, isn't it, Mrs. Carnivore? Or crab dip, any of those things that you can be picking off of the whole time, if you will go ahead and eat complete meal until you are full and you do not even think about wanting any right so you're hosting thanksgiving you're gonna eat until you can't even think about eating then you're gonna host thanksgiving everyone's gonna sit down at the dining table to eat their meal what are you gonna do anything else and when you eat these meals before you go and before you do this, they need to be the ones healthy meals, things that you are supposed to be eating. Get to the point where you are not even thinking about food and then start your cooking. That way you will not be tempted to pick off of everything and you will be less tempted to eat it after you're done because you will have been full you will you know how it is you will have smelled it that whole time and you'll just kind of be over it that is a really good tip for me i know during the holidays these past couple years when i'm just not eating any carbs or sugar at all what i'll do is get up and eat a full breakfast before i even start cooking that way nothing really appeals to me i'm so satisfied i'm just doing this for the people i love and i'm not craving it you do the cooking are we buying that people and then i make sure that i have something that i can eat with everyone else because you don't want to be that person that doesn't eat with everyone else so i like last year i just made sure i had turkey i had um i think we did a pork roast and i can't remember what else i ate i think i ate some shrimp and then even when we did like an Italian night and we ordered like a bunch of things from this local Italian restaurant, I was able to eat the top off of pizza, but I ate before that ever happened. You always want to set yourself up for success. Always. Don't put yourself in the position where you could cave because the there's a lot of mental things that go with this. After you get through with a party or a meal out and you have the confidence that you did it. You know, the, the meal is over your home and you didn't cheat, you feel great, your stomach doesn't hurt, you don't feel bloated. You're What a load of bollocks. You achieved something, you didn't cheat. Nah, 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 nah. So is this your life for the rest of time now? Eggs in the morning, a steak and shrimps at night, that's it. Day in, day out, day in, day out. 365 days of the year, every year left till you die. Is that it? Anyone else think that's mad? Either you have no uh, words. Um... Oh, what is it when you can stop yourself doing something? Anywho, you've got none of that, whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> you can't go somewhere unless you've already eaten. Why would you already eat when you're going to have a plate full of turkey and pork and whatever else you had? You don't need to. So you're telling me that you couldn't stand the smell while things are cooking without devouring everything that people are bringing that's a problem that is a real problem i could quite easily at christmas just have what i always do meat and either brussels sprouts or whatever and not touch anything else but it's fucking christmas and I like roast potatoes. And if my husband gets them so that they're that crispy, I ain't saying no. Do I go downhill from there and eat every cake in Christendom? No. 
She's basically saying that she can't control herself. Self-control, that's the thing. She's got no self-control. Ready for the night, you feel good, you don't need a heating pad, you don't need Tom's Pepto-Bismol. That confidence will carry you a long way. Now, if you cheat, what are you going to think? You're going to be upset with yourself. No. You're going to think kind of like, you know, I don't want to cuss, but you know, you're going to think kind of like, screw it. I'm going to just go for it. That's. I don't want to cuss. Well, you do at home. So why can't you on YouTube? Hmm? See, people say to me that come over here to tell me how horrible I am. Um, what a rotten mouth I've got and blah 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 blah. Yeah, but I'm honest This is me That ain't her She's got a potty mouth too Only she doesn't let you see it Who's worse? Hmm? The liar in my opinion. Oh, I'll pretend to be a sweet southern belle Someone said I make fun of her accent. I'm not making fun of the southern accent i'm making fun of lisa trying to pretend that she's a sweet southern lady when she's far from how do you need a heating pad and tums and pepto bismol if you just eat the meat when you go out or eat the things that you're supposed that you're eating you don't have to eat all the shit no one's pouring it down your throat This is, I know, because this is how I used to think. I would think, oh, well, I might as well finish out the night. Or, oh, well, I'm just going to finish out the whole Thanksgiving and I'll get back on the wagon on Monday. See, it's your problem, not ours, yours. This is Void Holiday Weight Gain with these five easy tips for Lisa. Of course, you can make up that time. It will set you back, but it hurts your psyche it makes you feel like you can't keep promises to yourself no, and that don't. is just not good so what a load of utter bollocks oh the more she says the more i want to fucking thump her so eat before you cook send left ho leftovers home with guests i i agree with that one you don't want to have a house full of stuff that you're not allowed to eat waving at you every time you open the fridge. But you can go out and have a meal, enjoy a meal. Send those leftovers home. Make sure that you have bought some to-go packages so that you can pack everything that you don't want to eat. What about John and Will? Do you think they might like some of the leftovers? If Will is anything like my two, he's going to want the mac and cheese. Pasta. Pasta monsters. But no, see? Selfish. Home with other people. They will love it. It will help you get your kitchen clean. It will keep your refrigerator from getting just crowded with a bunch of stuff you might not eat and it will keep you from nibbling all night now if your family wants the leftovers i do understand that but i would say nine times out of ten most people are over it i think children like if there's something that your children might want i would keep those but what i oh that's big of you I do is like the corn souffle all of those things that you know everybody has kind of pigged out on already I send those home with my guests I can always cook them again for my family but I try to get everything out of the house I can always cook them again for my family when when do you cook you don't obvious by that fucking pathetic video on how to boil eggs that was proof fucking perfect if we ever needed it that you can't cook house i think it's a nice thing to do for them and it keeps you from indulging on those things later that night so send as many leftovers as you can home with your guests home 
Don't bring leftovers home. Well, Don't duh. take home leftovers. Unless it's something that like turkey or steak, a lot of times my family would do a big prime rib. Unless it's something like that, or you know, if you're gluten-free or you're just trying to cut down and you're still keto, then you know, of course, take home those things that you are allowed to eat on your diet, but don't take home anything allowed to eat on your diet. Wow. I bet her fridge looks a lot like Lardy's. I bet there's absolutely fucking nothing in there because she can't be trusted with normal food in a fridge. Ain't thinking, I won't eat this. Don't drag out the food celebration. Just eat and have a good time while you're there. Well, you just said... You just said eat before you go so you don't have to fucking eat there. Which is it? Enjoy yourself and eat there or don't eat at all. Which? This, I'll just save it for so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. If you can, try not to get out of your eating routine, even with your family, because that may tempt you. So don't take home leftovers just to make someone feel good. Just try to get away from the kitchen as fast as possible. Bonus tip. Ooh. My bonus tip, that is for you moms out there. I know when my children were young, there were just things that I would make around Christmas time. Buckeyes, the little peanut butter balls that you dip in chocolate. I always made those. I always made the white chocolate covered pretzels. That was like a thing that we made all the time. I used to make peanut butter cookies. We used to make sugar cookies. And yet again, another stock photograph of somebody else getting cakes out the oven. Cookies. We would even make the sugar cookies. We would make the cheap ones and we would make the ones where we cut them out and put sprinkles and icing and all of that stuff. So I do understand that cooking these things and, you know, these experiences are part of the holidays. And I would never want you to miss out on that. This would be my advice. Make sure you yourself are full before you start cooking those things for your children so that you're not nibbling off of their plate. And who nibbles off their child's plate? Here's a tip. Don't eat off of your child's plate. Make small batches so that they get the treat maybe one or two times and they're gone. They're not just sitting there. I know they look pretty. I know they do. But just make sure they're not sitting there looking at you the whole time because it's just really easy to justify it because you're thinking, oh, I want to have this experience with my children. I want to eat with them. I want, you know, all of Yeah, and normal mothers will do. So what would you do when they come up to you with something in their little pudgy hand and go, here, mama, taste this. And they're shoving it in your mouth. What do you do? Spit it out, say no, scream, run away. Here's my tip. Enjoy your fucking time with your children in the holidays and don't listen to a fucking word Lisa says. These things and you'll say one won't hurt. And then when other people see you not eating it, they will be saying, oh, have some with us. They just don't understand. And a lot of people, you know, they just want you to eat with them. They just want you to celebrate with them. That's normal. But if you are like me, that's just something I can't have just a little bit. And at this point, I don't even want just a little bit. It will make me feel sick. So maybe so if you know it's going to make you feel sick, then you shouldn't be tempted by it at all. Simple, really, isn't it? Oh, that gives me a tummy ache every time I eat it. I ain't eating that. Where's the temptation? There is none. Make small batches, and before you start with those, make sure that you are full. Like if you're carnivore like me, or if you're keto, fix yourself a big lunch, maybe bigger than usual, so that you are extra stuffed, and then do those things with your children. Or then make that favorite dessert that your husband loves. And, you know, maybe serve it to him or that special person, whoever it is, until you think they're over it. And then send the other the rest of it to someone else like if it's a pie or a cake or something like that so i hope these tips will help you just a little 
during the holidays. I know that they have helped me. This is what I do for every party, every outing, every single thing I do. Gosh, she must be an absolute fucking joy to live with over the holidays. Even when I go to um, like work conventions or anything like that, vacations, I always make sure that I know what I'm going to eat and I make sure that I get away from, I don't sit at the table while someone else, when they're eating other things, I just sit there for a few minutes, make sure I've, you know, talked to everyone a few minutes and then I excuse myself and I go eat the things that I want to eat. On your own. Really. You scuttle away from all the people that you only get to see once in a blue moon so that you're not tempted to eat what they're eating. That says more about you than them or anyone else. It's your problem. You have no self-control. Does she look like she's sat in a kitchen there? I know she's got the chair and the table and everything, but the, the white tiles and whatever, it looks like a hotel kitchen to me. How about you, you work on your self-control, Lisa, instead of telling people not to eat with their family or their children? Great fucking advice, that is. Anyone else think that... <laughs> Meh. And then no one, no one misses me and I feel good the whole time. Thank you. Nobody does miss you for watching if you do like these carnivore ish videos then i will link one up here for you to watch i will see you in the next video bye bye wow well i am gonna go and watch the crown that's gonna be my brain bleach of the day and i will catch you all in the next one